ABC News, Washington correspondent Alex Prochet with me now, listening to the president right along with me. So, Alex, what stood out to you from the president's speech? Well, Deirdre, a couple of things here. Uh, number one, I mean, this was a very, very pro-union speech. You heard the president at the very end talking about how uh, he was going to be giving the Presidential Medal of Freedom to uh, Richard Trumka, who is the president of the AFL-CIO, uh, and the, 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 the cheers that erupted from that. Uh, but but also, this was a, a, a chance for for President Biden to, to tout his agenda and specifically how it has impacted the Rust Belt. I mean, you talk about uh, kitchen table politics and kitchen table economics here. Well, this was a speech that was geared directly at that. The president saying that unions uh, are, are the, the middle class is dependent on unions and uh, that how unions have really, really uh, uh, been a, a, a crucial, a crucial point for this country that has spanned decades. And the last thing that I'd point out here is we heard the president uh, actually name check a number of Republicans and he has said that you know their economic policies have have held up uh, certain things that he's wanted to to, to 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 push forward and that's something that's that's been a little bit differently but specifically name checking Lindsey Graham specifically name checking Rick Scott and also uh, Senator Rob Johnson I mean these uh, the president going after some of these Republicans that he feels has held up uh, some of the initiatives that could be helping uh, a lot of these uh, these middle class Ohioans yeah Alex and we heard some of the booze there and I want to come back to your points on the economic agenda but before he spoke about those issues he also spoke about Jalen Walker who was killed in Ohio by police and since the president is in Ohio today he seemed to want to address what happened or at the very least did not ignore it uh, what was significant about that well, so the president addressing this, saying that federal authorities were closely monitoring uh, what happened and also saying, quote, if the evidence reveals potential violations, the Justice Department will take the appropriate action. Now, this isn't the first time that we've seen uh, the president direct the Justice Department to to, to monitor a situation. Uh, something similar happened uh, during uh, the, the killing of George Floyd, also uh, during the investigation of the uh, Ahmed Arbery trial in Brunswick. With Georgia, this one now also uh, reaching that level. Uh, and, and, and look, I mean, I think even you, you heard the cheers from 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 the crowd immediately as as as, as he announced that. Uh, but you know, the president coming into Ohio, this this was something that you know he almost had to address in, in some some manner or another. Uh, but uh, yes, we're we're seeing the president lean in and also saying that look, this there is going to be some federal scrutiny of of, of the situation. The president also, I want to just mention politically, not endorsing too many candidates for office this primary season, but he did endorse Chantel Brown, one of the speakers ahead of the president. Why is the president keeping his public endorsements so rare? Well, I, I think whenever you look at primaries, um, specifically party primaries, it's 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 not it's not unusual for for the, for the head of the political party to to wait for things to kind of shake out and then endorse in the general. So I think what we're seeing from the president, and by my count, I think I have him at at at, at three endorsements so far during this primary season. Uh, Chantel Brown and Ohio 11 being one of them. Uh, I, I, I don't think that 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 is unusual. Meanwhile, you look at the former president, former President Trump, who 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 has dozens and dozens of endorsements early on. That that certainly is a mark, and we've we've talked with experts who have said that that is unusual. Uh, but I, I I think you know the fact that he is in Chantel's uh, Chantel Brown's backyard in in, in this Cleveland uh, this Cleveland area talking to this union kind of speaks to how important. This particular district is not just to Democrats' control of Congress, but also, but also to the Biden administration. I mean, clearly they've uh, identified this area as 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 a particular uh, a particular bellwether for them, uh, in not just in these midterms, but also potentially in 2024. Yeah, you and I were speaking about Ohio, how important that state is, uh, obviously at a state level, but at a national level for any contest. The president, we feel like there to hope reinvigorate his political standing with blue collar workers. Will voters respond? 
Well, that's certainly their hope, right? But I mean, it's certainly when I mean, you look at the poll numbers, right? And in, in you know, 538 has been great at tracking this. They have the president's approval rating right now at about 39%, which is not great. Uh, but but we talked about the importance of Ohio, and you know, there's this interesting stat that since the year 2000, all presidential elections except for one. Uh, so goes Ohio, so goes that election. And so I mean, I, I can't stress enough just how important uh, this is to, to, uh, to, to the Biden administration. And certainly explains the numerous visits that he has made to that state so far this year. But Alex, getting back to the issues of the economy, we know that inflation is a boiling issue for Americans right now. What can the Biden administration emphasize as recent efforts? I mean, we heard him talk about wanting to lower drug prices, wanting to lower food prices, but he didn't really get into too many details about what has been done so far, right? Well, and so and so that's the thing, right? So wanting to lower, uh, lower prescription drug prices, running, wanting to lower food prices. He talked about wanting to eliminate the federal gas tax, but you know there there is thus far hasn't been enough uh, momentum in Congress from from members on the other side of the aisle to, to to push forward that kind of legislation. And I think that is going to be something uh, that the you know the White House is going to have to have to overcome, right? Because because at the end of the day, you can want to have all these plans, and certainly this has been the, the critique from the other side you can want to have all these plans but if you don't actually execute well voters are saying that you know our pockets are still kind of hurting i think that one thing that the the biden administration would point to is you know we've seen the the price on 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 a barrel of gas uh, uh or oil oil prices tick down and that's actually impacted the price of gas at the pumps uh you've seen the initiatives that the the, the biden administration has taken with the strategic uh, strategic oil preserve um, petroleum reserves in in trying to level out, you know, some of these uh, these record high gas prices that we've had uh, in, in 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 recent months, and also how that trickles down to food prices. And so there there has been this triage. The the um, the, the 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 crux of it though is, will this be enough? Will voters say, you know, come November, we've seen enough initiatives from this White House that that, that makes them feel confident in the way uh, President Biden has led us economically? Alex, you and I have spoken on other occasions, though. I mean, many oil experts say that the reason that the price of oil is coming down is because there are many people who are factoring in at least an economic slowdown that's global. And that is part of the reason why we're seeing these prices come down, not so much because of any one, let's say, projected action by any one government. And by that, I mean even the suggestion of the cutting of the federal gasoline tax, which again, as we've talked about, many, many critics say, listen, 18 cents a gallon, which is essentially what it is equivalent to, doesn't really move the needle for American families anyway, for like the average car, for the average driving that Americans do. It comes out to like $50 a month for the three months that the suspension of this gas tax would last. But that said, you know, the president did not address some of the other issues that many citizens are following. So gun rights comes to mind. I mean, he made a very specific reference of course, to Jalen Walker, but not gun rights in general. Do you think he's just trying to sidestep that, or do you think he was just trying to stay focused on, as you mentioned, these Rust Belt issues? I, I think that this was a very focused appearance by the president. I mean, he knew who he was addressing, he knew the crowd. Um, you know, they were able to pass a bipartisan gun rights legislation, which which was a victory uh, for, for the Biden administration uh, on a number of fronts. It didn't go as far as he wanted it to, but I mean, I, I think this okay. was a very, very targeted appearance. Uh, and so he was he was very much focused on, on, on these unions. Thank you, Alex. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.